Hey there guys, alright, today we are back with some more yarn hub. This time, one of major attached bazookas to a spotter plane. Now before we dive into the video here, make sure you go check out the links below in my description box or in my pinned comment in the comment section. I have links to my Twitch channel where I stream Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Fridays, and Saturdays from 6pm to 9pm US, US Central Standard Time. And then I also have a link to my gaming channel here on YouTube where I am just uploading old stream files. Now, Catching bazookas to the spotter plane. I don't understand how he's capable of, you know, how did, how did he wire, wire up the bazookas so that they can fire, you know, from inside his, you know, cockpit? I, I, I that's what I'm wondering. Uh, <laughs> I don't, and I'm also curious how effective this was. He used them to shoot at other, other, uh, planes. Or if he just used it as like close air support and fired down on enemy soldiers. Um, that's my two big questions from this, from the title alone. Let's go ahead and uh, see if they get answered. It's September 1944. The Battle of Arakul is underway. Oh, it's an American, yeah. Well, yeah, Bazooka gives it away that it's American. The German 5th Panzer Army is up against the US 4th Armored Division. The Germans outnumber the American forces. The US forces have the advantage of air superiority, but the Germans have better gun range. Heavy fog has set in around the combatants and the playing field is level. Under cover of the fog, German Panthers have advanced towards the US headquarters and have the Americans pinned down. Taking off in his Piper Al-4 Grasshopper from a field nearby is Major Charles Carpenter, an observation pilot. The Grasshopper is a light aircraft made of fabric over a steel frame, with a top speed of just 85 miles per hour. Essential I mean, it's not too bad. I mean, obviously, for a plane, not that. That's, that's still pretty good. To the push My mind. Europe, these spotters could see the hidden German armor that laid frequently in ambush, causing havoc for the Allies as they pushed through France towards Germany. Although today, the fog has prevented Charles II from seeing what is happening below. Oh. Around noon, the fog and low cloud that has been covering the battlefield starts to clear. It's at this moment, through the mist, that Carpenter sees several German Panther tanks heading towards Aracor. Without hesitation, Carpenter wheels his slow-moving bird around and starts to dive towards the Germans below. Charles's actions will make him and his grasshopper famous. This isn't just any Piper Al-4. This grasshopper bites back. Armed with six bazookas, three under each wing, this little plane packs a punch and has been christened with fire? the name Rosie the Rocketer. Back oh, so he's done this before. He has... He has attached bazookas to his spider plane. Before This ain't the first time he's done this. Inside the cockpit, Charles is at the controls. He's added a special panel on the console, upon which there are six switches, one for each bazooka. Okay. Charles can activate each one, or fire a salvo of all six if necessary. Charles knows- I mean, obviously it's, it's one shot per bazooka. That the armor on top of the German tanks is relatively so thin and only went up to 45 millimeters on the heaviest of tanks. With each bazooka able to penetrate 99 millimeters, Rosie was more than capable of raining down deadly force upon the unsuspecting tank crews below. Putting the plane into a deep dive, Charlie flicks two switches on his customized panel on the console. There's a brief puff of smoke as the electricity ignites the charge and the rocket powers towards its intended okay, so target of a German too. panther below. Smashing into the turret and creating a barrage of molten hot shrapnel inside, the Iron Beast splutters its last and grinds to a halt. Ooh. Pulling on the stick and out of the deep dive, Carpenter allows himself a moment of triumph as he escapes the flurry of small arms fire that is now buzzing all around Rosie. Usually the Germans don't fire at spotters as it gives away their positions, but realizing this pilot isn't flying the usual harmless type of grasshopper, they desperately try to hit the escaping plane. Carpenter doesn't go far. Gaining enough height, he pushes forward again to line up his next target. This time, the Germans are ready, and Rosie doesn't completely escape the hail of lead. Unperturbed, wow. Charles takes out his second prize of the day, and another panther is stopped in the field. Despite the fire from below, Carpenter used all his rockets and headed back to base, leaving oh. devastation behind him. 
Landing okay. back at base, Carpenter refueled and rearmed Rosie, took off again, and headed back to the column. Going straight back in, the okay, Germans I were respect it. through everything they had at Charles and Rosie. Charles managed to do several attack runs using his full complement of rockets, and then incredibly headed back to base, rearmed and refueled, and engaged the Germans a third time. The grasshopper was made of fabric stretched over a metal frame and had a huge amount of lift for its size. As such, it could take several hits from small arms fire. And provided they didn't hit anything essential, such as the pilot or the engine... <laughs> Just like, I, don't, I don't know why I find that so funny. Provided they don't hit anything essential, like the pilot. <laughs> the plane could shrug off holes in the wings or fuselage. Having destroyed or immobilized several tanks and armored vehicles, oh. the remaining panzers were forced to retreat, and Charles decided that was enough for one day. They, they retreated from one lone spotter plane. God damn. Interviewed by Stars and Stripes magazine, God damn. Charles told the reporter his idea of war was to attack, attack, and then attack again. <laughs> when asked what the enemy made of Charles, he said, Word must be getting around to watch out for cubs with bazookas on them. Every time I show up now, they shoot with everything they have. They never used to bother cubs. Bazookas must be bothering them a bit. Not one to just battle in the air, Charles was no stranger to combat on the ground. Near Avranche, Carpenter was scouting landing sites. Spotted by Germans, his unit found themselves under attack. No fucking way. With the US forces battling for their lives, Charles realized the battle was going against them. In a battle rage, he climbed upon a Sherman tank and took control of a 50 caliber machine gun. Taking aim upon the enemy positions, Charles yelled all the while at the American troops to attack and press forward. Led on that day by the mad major shouting encouragement upon the Sherman, the Americans won the day and pushed the German forces back. A little too enthusiastically, Charles all the while continued firing, unwittingly striking an American Sherman bulldozer tank. The bulldozer blade of the tank was shot off by Charles, and yeah. he was placed under arrest for his perceived recklessness. Threatened with the firing squad, he was in mortal danger for his actions, until his yeah. commanding officer intervened. Expecting to be court-martialed in an incredible turn of events, General Patton himself saved Charles. Patton went on to admonish his men for arresting Charles, and instead of punishing him, he awarded the Major the Silver Star for bravery, saying that Carpenter was just the kind of fighting man he wanted in his army. The press loved the story of the Mad Major, and his fame grew. He was interviewed and told the reporters, Some people around here think I'm nuts, but I just believe that if we're going to fight a war, we have to get on with it, 60 minutes an hour and 24 hours a day. By the end of the war, Charles had incredibly knocked out 14 tanks, but was officially credited with six tanks destroyed, including what? two of the feared Tiger Ones. For his actions, he was promoted to Lieutenant Colonel. In 1945, Carpenter was diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease and was honorably discharged from service, being given just two years to live. He returned oh. to work as a high school history teacher in Illinois and defied the doctor's That's my state. predictions and died in 1966. Hmm. As for Rosie, okay. she survived the war. In 1946, she was left in a German surplus yard and had her bazookas removed. Repainted in civilian oh. colors and resold to owners in Switzerland and Austria, she became a flying club plane. Just another piper. Eventually, she ended up gathering dust in the Österreichische Luftfahrtmuseum. Her illustrious past completely forgotten. Oh man, that's lame. Incredibly, in just 2017, Rosie was tracked down. Realizing the historical importance, she was purchased by the Collings Foundation and brought to the US, where she is currently under restoration. The oh, Foundation yeah. has almost finished the restoration and have returned Rosie back to her original configuration. The Rosie the Rocketer artwork on the side of the Grasshopper looks exactly the same as it was originally. It was painted on by Lieutenant Colonel Charles Carpenter's granddaughter, Erin. We look forward to seeing Rosie flying again in the near future. Thanks to War History Online for supplying us with the details to this. Okay. Uh, then the, the sad thing about that, though, is how much of the original is still there? Because obviously they got rid of the original bazookas. The original paint job is gone. Um, it looks like perhaps the original controls are still there as well as the original switches perhaps were still remain there 
after all those years. Um, so then it's kind of like, um, I don't. It's a weird question. Like how how much of it still is the original then at that point? Um, but it's still cool that the at least uh, frame of it uh, survived all these years, all those decades. 70 years? Is that the right math? Yeah. Um, that's insane. And 14 tanks? God, bazookas from a plane? A spotter plane at that? That's fucking crazy. Um, yeah, no, Yarnhub did a great job as always. I have nothing to add, nothing else to add here at the end. Um, I mean, you could definitely make a, uh, you could definitely say something about uh, Atten being the one to, uh, I guess, save the Major's hide, uh, in this case. Uh, Patton was an extremely reckless general, uh, and you could honestly argue that he got more Americans killed than um, necessary, I guess, if, you, if that's the right term for it, when, uh, in, the French cam- in the campaign in France. Uh, is he as reckless? Yeah. Uh, perhaps not the best strategist, but he was, I guess, charis- fairly charismatic with his troops. I guess is perhaps more important? Who knows? That's not for me to say. I am not a military historian. But uh, yeah, that was when a major attached bazookas to a spotter plane by Yarnhub. I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.